Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the official World of Concrete wrap-up episode. If you've been paying attention on our social media platforms, and I know you have been, you've seen all of the cool media that we've put out on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. If you haven't already, go search us out on those platforms by searching Ad10 Podcast or Ad10 Pod. Uh, we've put interview videos up on YouTube. Uh, with interesting tech and new products that we've uh, you know come across while we were out there at the show. And then we also kept our stories full on the Facebook and Instagram platforms as well. But we're back now, and uh, we wanted to wrap the show up, put a bow on it, um, and tell you about what all we saw and, and what we noticed during the first World of Concrete back from the COVID-19. And to do that, I got the guys with me. Paul, what's going on? Hey, brother. Glad to have you guys back. Uh, well done on those interviews. At World of Concrete, the videos on YouTube look fantastic. If uh, anybody in the audience hasn't checked those out yet, uh, please go check those out. They look great. Uh, so well done, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good time. Joey, what's up, man? Not a whole lot. Uh, it was good to get back out there for sure. Excited to talk about what we found out there. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a good time. It's different that uh, it was in the middle of the summer, whereas it is usually in late January, early February, uh, and it will be again. And we'll we'll get into those details here later. But the audience may be interested to know, but probably not, that uh, I made it out there, walked around for two straight days, and didn't get a nosebleed or die of dehydration. So I'm here talking to you now because I survived. Uh, and it actually wasn't that bad. What do you think about that, Joey Bo? Was uh, how was the weather out there? It was hot, you know, but it wasn't like our heat humidity mixture that we have down here, where you know it could be seventy five degrees here, but eighty percent humidity, and it still feels miserable. Whereas out there, it was a hundred degrees, dry with a breeze. And if you stood in the shade, it was actually pretty, I mean, tolerable. It wasn't that bad. Um, so the weather was different, and. I think the timing of the year maybe also had an effect on the crowd as well as, you know, COVID stuff, international travel, that kind of thing. So the, the crowd was different and it was smaller. I would say almost by half. I don't know what you, well, would you say half? At least. Yeah, at least. I, I didn't uh, see any published numbers as far as the total attendance, um, but foot traffic, I would say at least half. The aisles were never jam-packed with people like they have been in the past and as far as the exhibitors go they only utilize two halls um and the outdoor exhibits seem to be pretty thin mm -hmm. um so th they didn't use the south hall at all uh, whereas that used to be a staple for a lot of the uh, chemical companies i know bsf and uh, mape and euclid and all those guys used to be in the south hall along with all of your um, all of your Asian abrasive companies, they, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they weren't there. Of course, uh, all of that stuff was in the North Hall, and then the parking lot where all of the outdoor exhibits used to be. That is now the West Hall. That parking lot's gone. Oh, geez. Yeah, it used to be the parking lot across the street from the North Hall. Yeah. is no longer a parking lot. It's a giant building. Oh, that's that's the new West Hall. And nice. then even further on the other side of that, mm -hmm. that is where the outdoor exhibits were. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the outdoor exhibits weren't in the parking lot where you get off the light rail station. Right. That's what I was thinking. I'm, I'm picturing the light rail in my head, like getting yeah. off that station. Yep. So in that section, that's where they had the, the brick and masonry competitions. And there was some outdoor stuff there, but not much. Uh, the outdoor exhibits were Bosch tools and Honda generators and Ram trucks and all the cool stuff. That was on the other side, the far side of the new West Hall. So uh, you could walk from the North Hall to the West Hall through like a sky walkway that went over the road. Yeah. And it dropped you off basically in the lobby of the new West Hall. Nice. Well, I, I mean, I saw pictures of the new West Hall. I think y'all put one up, but a lot of other companies that were posting stuff on World of Concrete, like that was kind of the, the picture they were going with was that West Hall was, I mean, was it nice? Was there anything to talk about there? Uh, super nice. Um, super well lit. It, it looks modern. It looks more modern than the North and South Hall now, so they might have to <laughs> renovate those in the upcoming years. But uh, when you first walk in, it's three levels total. Okay. Um, the middle level is where you walk into from the the walkway from the North Hall, and then okay. you can go down to the, the bottom level, and then there's classrooms and meeting rooms and stuff like that in the top two levels. But when you walk into the lobby, the entire wall is a screen 
where they have advertised. Oh, that was a screen. Yeah. Okay. See, on the pictures, you can't really tell that. I actually thought those were like banners hanging uh, up on the walls. No, that was a screen. It's pretty oh, cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. yep. And then they have uh, the cafeteria area is really nice. There's, you know, Dunkin' Donuts and pizza places. And like there's a lounge area. Um, so that's that's much more improved. There's much more seating capacity there than there is in the other halls where people are literally sitting on the stairs eating lunch and stuff. You're saying that it's better than the Aces cafeteria in the South Hall? <laughs> in every imaginable way, yes. <laughs> Everybody listening to this knows exactly what cafeteria we're talking about over there. <laughs> yeah, it is It is better than Aces by, by a country mile. Well, and you, you got gals like Quick Crete who would go into the South Hall. So for the people that didn't know, that never came and saw us in World Concrete, we were always in the South Hall. And then uh, at first we were like all the way in the back of the South Hall, like way back there where they like forgot to put carpet, like way back there. And, <laughs> and as the years went on uh, and we paid them more money, uh, we got to move up. And it just, it blew my mind when you see how much it costs to exhibit at these places. Mm -hmm. And then you see the booth like Quick Crete. Yeah. I mean, it's a quarter million dollar booth. And these poor guys are having to eat at Aces <laughs> at lunch. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Stale <laughs> salads and cold pizza. You know, I just, it's horrible. I felt bad for them. I was like, man, this is, you spent a quarter million dollars. Like, you should be able to get some real food. So um, I'm super happy to hear that uh, you guys got an upgraded experience with the cafeteria. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it definitely is better. Definitely is better. But then once you walk inside the West Hall where they're exhibiting, um, it's just a lot of room spaced out really nice. The aisles, I think, are a little bit wider than in the other the other halls, north and south. But it's a really cool spot. It's a really cool place. They did a great job with the project, uh, the expansion project, and all the renovations that they did there. But you put some miles down. There's plenty of walking. Yeah. Plenty yeah. of walking to be done while you're out there. Joey, yeah, did you count my, your steps? Uh, yeah, you yeah gotta, I did. I looked at my garment. Counter. Yeah, I looked at my Garmin, and the couple days we were out there, we put down, what was it, Josh, like 15,000, 16,000 steps every day, you know, something like that. I don't really know how yeah, many that miles was, that was. Yeah, that was on the low end. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to say, you you had to be way over that. Uh, the one day we were around 16, and the next day we were around eighteen or 19,000. Mm -hmm. I'm not impressed. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. It's what it is, man. I'm sorry. You know what? Now I'm upset. That you didn't do more. Uh, I don't know what, what were you. What were you thinking? Like in your mind, what what number did you want to hear? Thirty-two thousand. Dang. Well, well, Paul, sorry. you're short, so your steps can count more than a regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're working with a two to one ratio, so actually three thirty thousand, thirty two hundred. That actually works out. It's yep. probably what yours would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, says the guy. You know, all right, all right. That's where you want to go with it. I'm not the tallest dude, so either. So, gotta let the people know that today we found a throwback photo of Josh Hare, where he had this awesome, awesome hair. Yeah. And I, I got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? Uh, I, I understand why your fiance made you get rid of that hair because, mm -hmm. on its worst day, mm -hmm. you were Nick Cage from Con Air. Yeah. <laughs> but on your best day <laughs> on your best day you like you're competing for a wakeboarding national championship that's what i was going for anyway that so, black hair yeah. man what was uh what was john travolta's character in pulp fiction is a vic and when i see josh with his in the old photos with his long hair and i think when i first met josh that's like that dude looks like pulp the guy from pulp fiction but yeah vincent vega was his vincent name. vincent <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I immediately thought of when I first saw you. Because I, when I first started at, at at AMI, you had that long hair, and you had it for a pretty good while. I was like, yep, there's old Vincent right there. Yeah, well, I hung on to it as long as I could because it took me a year and a half to get it to that point. So Yeah. But, you know, I got rid of it, and a couple of years later, the mullet apparently is back in style. So <laughs> it's, it's a day late, dollar short, as always. Timing's never been my strong suit. I mean, we're – planning on you about looking like Nick Cage and Con Air, but legit, I thought it was awesome. I thought the hair was great, and uh, I, I was I was sad to see it go. Yeah. I mean, you got the cool kid haircut going on now, but... Yeah. Well, uh, it's never coming back, that's for sure. <laughs> I tried to grow mine out for like, I don't know, almost a year, and I don't know, mine 
mine's got too much like wave and curl to it. I just I got a bunch of salad in the back of my head when Where I try it's to at, grow. man. You gotta let that lettuce flow, son. Yes, I know. I just don't have the patience to let it grow out for like two years, you know. And I wish I could just like snap my fingers and just it would grow out just so I could see what it looked like because that was the whole point. I wanted to grow it out, just see what it looked like. And uh, yep. no, it takes too long. And then in the summertime down here, I'm not having long hair. No. I'm, I'm good. Uh, yeah. The, the awkward stage is a real thing and it takes a while to get past it. So that's, mm-hmm. that's why my hair is never coming back. But speaking of coming back and the world of concrete, bringing it back into the, the reason why we're here on the episode, the world of concrete is coming back in about seven months. It's not going to be a full year. They're going back to their originally scheduled program of January. 18th, 17th, 19th, somewhere around in there. That's correct. Yep. January 18th, 19th, and 20th. So I'm going to throw this out there in the most PG way possible. Um, There's going to be some other stuff going on at the same time as the War of Concrete in late January that might bring in a couple extra eyeballs and a couple extra extra people. Okay. There's plenty of stuff to do during this time in Las Vegas. All right. One, you have the SHOT Show at the Sands Convention Center. So that's cool. I'm definitely going to that in a little bit. If we can carve out some free time, I'm definitely going to the SHOT Show while we're out there. Um, Because it's the exact, the the three days the World of Concrete Convention is going on, so is the SHOT Show. It's usually the week before. Mm -hmm. So this time around, it's actually on the exact same time. That's fascinating. Yep, yep. So you'll uh, you'll have playoff football going on, of course. You'll have the SHOT Show. And then there's uh, another award show that happens out there during this time of year that is catered towards uh, the adult industry. That uh, So if you go to the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, um, there's that. So <laughs> there's going to be plenty of stuff to do and see while you're out there uh, in your spare time when you're not visiting the World Concrete Convention coming up in January. So. Guns, women, and concrete. That's it. <laughs> the three major food groups. <laughs> Las Vegas should just be draped in an American flag that whole week. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the Raiders are in the playoffs. Oh, so. man. <laughs> it pictures could get ugly around don't, there. Yeah, pictures don't do that stadium justice. As you're driving by that thing, it literally looks like the Death Star. It, oh, y'all uh, saw it when yeah. you're yeah, it's just we this were... huge black mirror looking spaceship thing. It's gigantic. I wanted to take the tour, but we didn't have time. Yeah, it looks like a super villain layer, you know. Yeah, like Josh said, just black. It was lit up at night. It was just I don't know, it was super cool looking. No, that is awesome. I mean, if shoot, it's it's gonna be hard, dude. If if the Raiders are are in fact playing this. I mean that's going to be a tough ticket to get. We might uh, might have to fly in early just to be hanging around there for that Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I mean that's that's something we've done before. We've gone out there early before. I remember for one World of Concrete, it's when the Ravens were in the playoffs, and no, it was it was Super Bowl. It was Super Bowl. The Ravens were playing the 49ers in the Super Bowl the weekend right before World of Concrete started, and we all went out there early. That was a good time. Yeah, we had our international guys out there with us right and mm. they went ham they <laughs> didn't know anything about american football and, nor I mean, did they care <laughs> no, no, they just couldn't believe vegas was real it was yeah. hilarious yeah, yeah. not to be a good time but book your hotels now boy because the world's opening up and there's gonna be a whole lot of other stuff to do there at the during the time of world of concrete so there there might not be a cheap hotel room to be found are we automatically uh official members of the press again yes okay awesome so uh, i mean you guys could go ahead and start booking whatever you need to book yeah because you guys will definitely be going and then uh, maybe i'll go if, if there's a spot well especially if it's going to be attended with more people more foot traffic on the on the floor we'll we could definitely use you if nothing else you could be an usher because what uh what joey and i found was a camera attracts a crowd I don't know. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, I don't know anything about this. Tell me. A camera attracts a crowd. We would set up a tripod with the camera, get the mics all ready. We're going with wireless transmitters next time, by the way. <laughs> well, we'll put it in the budget. We yeah. got to do a budget here in a couple yeah, months. We're so going fun. with wireless transmitters. <laughs> but anyway, as soon as we set up that camera, the booth that we went to might have had two people and then all of a sudden swarm of people. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like clockwork. 
every single time, no well, matter where we went. I mean, this is a, you know, a shout out to the companies that, I mean, first we were interviewing interesting people. And then number two, you know, for next time, for the companies to hear this, let us know you want to be on it. Cause apparently uh, we bring the crowds with us. Yeah. If you want to triple your booth traffic while we have the camera set up, just give us a call. That's right. The people flock to a camera. But, um, but yeah, we were at the Cortex booth and Jake, the guy that does their marketing and everything, he was literally holding people back so they wouldn't walk through the camera, like yeah. the camera. So you need a get back guy. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah you could be the- <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, man, that's fascinating. I could carry around with me like a, a bundle that uh, allows me to set up velvet ropes so you guys you know people don't cross velvet ropes i don't know what it is we're like cattle we see a fence and you just oh i can't go that way (laughs) you got to keep in mind you know we would have the camera set up and and there would be a a cord laying on the floor going across from the camera and going back up to you know josh and you know whoever he was interviewing and people are still stupid you know don't ever forget that because they will still walk in front of a camera, walk into a, a tripod uh, because they don't pay attention. They don't care. They're too dumb to even understand what could be possibly going on. So don't ever underestimate the stupidity of a human being. I was wondering how all those guys that, that have like the like wagons, little pull carts they carry behind them so they can collect all the giveaways from the show. And I was like, how are they going to fit through the aisle when you have a tripod set up? <laughs> Well, that's another interesting yeah. observation that that uh, we talked about while we were out there was the type of crowd, like the quality of the attendees that were there. And we were talking to the exhibitors, you know, we asked and we asked pretty much everybody, you know, that we interviewed before or after we got done interviewing them that was there a difference in, you know, either crowd size or what, you know, what did they notice about this year versus the previous years? And of course, number one is that, you know, the crowd size, you know, it was obvious that the amount of people were less than previous years. But the other thing was that the quality of people that you were wanting to do business with, that was improved from years past, because in the years past, as we all know, you get it, everybody and their brother is out there, in you know january and february during those slow months you know especially up in the north and the east you know where weather's not so favorable for working outside so it slows down and a lot of guys get to go to world of concrete they bring their wives and the wives clean out every giveaway that they could possibly get and that's where you get your wagons you know filled up with junk this year there were a lot more you know the ratio of decision makers in a company to non-decision makers was uh, was a lot higher. There were a lot more people walking around that were there to do business and actually find out, you know, what could help their company, you know, going forward. Um, so that was one thing we noticed was that if you're going to be a, an exhibitor and have a lot less just foot traffic and a lot more, you know, traffic coming into the booth that you were wanting to work with and do business with, that this was the year to do it. It was just a lot better. Well said. You know, normally we're not in the business on this podcast of giving people a break. You know, <laughs> if, if something doesn't go favorable for you, we don't, you know, like to sugarcoat that. We like to laugh about when crazy things happens on job sites and people screw stuff up. But I did want to take a second, give the world of concrete a bit of a break there. You know, low attendance. I think we all understand it was off season, busy season, uh, COVID, everything like that. So if, if they only had 20,000, I mean, only. 20,000 attendees or whatever, instead of 50 or 60,000 attendees. Like, you know, that's all right. I'm glad to hear the the quality of the people were good. That's, that's really good to hear. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll for sure keep an eye out on, you know, numbers and attend attendance that gets published by world of concrete or whoever. And uh, we'll be sure and share that because we're all interested to find out exactly how many registrations there were. Um, So yeah, we'll for sure share that on here when we find it. All right. Awesome. And what's the date for the next World of Concrete coming up? January 18th, 19th, and 20th of 2022. All right. Well, we'll be there for sure. At the Las Vegas Convention Center. Same same bat time, same bat channel as it <laughs> as it has been in years past. So um, definitely looking forward to it. Looking forward to going back. Um, looking to see how the crowds uh, change and differ because um, I, don't, I don't know how it is in your states, 
But uh, here in the state of Maryland, July 1st, the uh, state of emergency for the COVID-19 pandemic is officially lifted and there are no restrictions, zero, none. So a lot of states are following suit if they haven't already. So even here in the States, it'll be great, but we missed a lot of our Australians. We missed a lot of our Canadians and missed a lot of our uh, Europeans, Eastern Europeans alike, um, and from Asia, Japan, those uh, those Eastern countries as well. They weren't there. Um, and restrictions are being or supposedly being lifted on a lot of those countries as well. So who knows? 2022, it might be business as usual or, a little, or at least a little bit closer to normal. So looking forward to that. I'm anxious to see what the hotel prices are next year, too, because we were pretty surprised at uh, the price of our hotel while we were out there. We stayed at the the Trump. We stayed at Trump Tower when we went out there last week. And uh, pricing, I think we figured up after all the fees and all the other junk they tack on, it was like, what, 150 to 170 yeah, it was one fifty nine and change to say it's Trump Tower. I'll yeah. probably never do that again in my lifetime. Was it nice? Absolutely, it was incredibly nice. It was probably one of the nicest hotels I have ever been in, and it wasn't like over the top nice. It was just very, very neat, very clean, just very, you know, t- tidy looking. And uh, it was, you know, a step up above, you know, Marriott, you know, Comfort Inn, you know, all that junk that we stay in all the time. But it wasn't just like super extravagant. It wasn't over the top. It was just a nice, real basic hotel, you know, or the rooms we stayed in rooms. We stayed in our rooms were exactly the same, Josh, but they were very well kept. There were no, you know, they looked like they had never been used hardly. They're just very tidy, wow. very neat, very well put together. Um, very nice hotel. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, speaking of those prices, you might as well go ahead and start booking hotels now because if, I mean, God forbid the Raiders make the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> $1,000 a night. But you yeah, know, secretly, yeah. we're all going to be pulling for the Raiders this year because, you know, we just want to be there while they're in the playoffs. I just want to, yeah. I just want to be a part of that. That's what's yeah. wild. I mean, they're, they're starting running back and one of their starting wide receivers are Bama guys. <laughs> Shout out Josh Jacobs, Henry Rooks the third, roll tide. So hey, I can get on board with this. Yeah. I mean, you know the Raiders, they got they got plenty of top ten draft picks year after year, so they ought to be loaded up with Bama talent. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys in Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland should be loaded with them. Bama guys. They just yeah. exchange the senior class out every year. Yeah. I, man, I'm trying to think. I think the Browns only have one st- starter no they got two they got two yeah yeah one as a fifth round pick linebacker hmm. uh that starts for him and then uh first round pick uh left tackle that uh just they just picked up last year so. yeah. yeah well Titans well, we'll, fans, we'll uh, oh sorry josh i was gonna mention real quick one more nfl thing that i the one thing about nfl i know about these days but titans fans are like uh secretly bama fans now because we just got julio jones Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah, good pickup for you guys. Julio yeah. Jones, and you got Derrick Henry mm-hmm. toting the rock. Roll Tide, boys. You know what? This has been a banger of an episode, <laughs> I got to say. <laughs> yep, yep. With that, you know, we'll, we'll continue to pull for the Raiders this year in 2022, and uh, we'll see all of you guys out there in Las Vegas in January for the next upcoming event that the World of Concrete holds at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We'll see you then and uh, be on the lookout for more Ad 10 podcast content. We're coming at you with a regularly scheduled episode where we interview Adam O'Ray from Malta Creek. We also have a couple episodes on deck. So we'll continue to put out the podcast um, and we'll continue to put out the media on our Facebook, Instagram and our brand new YouTube page as well. So give us a like, give us a follow, tell us, uh, tell a friend about us and uh, keep pumping up those numbers. We appreciate your time and your viewership. Until next time, we'll see you.